After calling Yellow Diamond a clod and becoming a full-fledged crystal gem, Peridot is incapable of containing the conflicting emotions she's feeling and turns into a raved mumbling wreck, but is aided by Garnet who demonstrates what makes her best mom. The closeness Peridot and Garnet share makes Steven wonder when the two developed a bond and he decides to listen through Peridot's log dates. This sends us into a zany series of wonderful flashbacks. Although Peridot's tape recorder log dates range from 7112 through 7152, it seems like Homeworld has much longer days than Earth does. The events we witness in the flashbacks occurred over a period of several weeks, starting at when everybody arrived at the barn to begin creating the drill. This has to be the absolute funniest episode of Steven Universe ever. I mean it, this episode is a whole different league of comedy than the others. There were multiple occasions where I had tears welling up in my eyes from laughing too hard. It may be funnier than all previous episodes combined. Okay, that last bit may be an over-exaggeration, but I can't overstate how much praise I have for the comedy. My gut physically hurt from laughing too much by the end of the episode. The amount of giggling, snorting, and howling I did? Oh, what a time! What a lovely time! I'd feature clips of jokes I chortled over, but there are so many, you may as well just rewatch the entire episode yourself. In fact, you should. As soon as this review is over, go rewatch this episode. You deserve it. What I said in my It Could Have Been Great review about Shelby Rabara deserving all the Emmys for her amazing voice talent on Peridot? I'm tripling down. She needs every award ever made thrown at her. Right now. Peridot's delivery is just... Ugh, so good. Has she won an Emmy yet? No. Get that woman her Emmy. So, Peridot was adamant and it could have been great about putting free time toward working on the drill rather than relaxing. All the varied flashbacks of Peridot wasting time in some of the silliest ways imaginable may seem a little odd, but they're easily justified in my opinion. When a group of people is working on a large long-term project, there's not always something for somebody to do. It may become a one-person job for a while, or until somebody fetches a certain part, the rest of the project may have to be put on temporary hold, and so on and so forth. It is quite believable that all these events and interactions we see occur with Peridot, all these things happen when she has moments of downtime when continuing to work on the drill may not be possible. There might be one moment where this goes too far, when Peridot spends 78 hours watching the same episode of Camp Pining Hearts, which is like, what, Canadian anime, sort of? Canada animation? That should probably be a real cartoon. I would watch it. Get on that Cartoon Network. Anyway, even if Peridot got mesmerized, spending a full 78 hours without working may be pushing it, but for the level of laughs that joke delivered, I will excuse it. That joke was worth way bigger of a plot hole than that. There is something important about Peridot and her transformation into shipping trash, though. I'm pretty sure Percy and Pierre are both guys, but that's not even the important part here, though it is pretty cool. Peridot is shipping Percy and Pierre not on the basis of romance, but on the basis of who can rule the camp. Who makes the most efficient, dynamic duo to make all the other campers obsolete. So when Garnet states she is like Percy and Pierre later in the episode, it's not like Peridot is grasping the concept of love yet. She is on her way to it, yes, and this Canadian cartoon may have been the spark to ignite her brain understanding the concept, but I think Peridot still has a while to go before romance as a concept becomes something she has full understanding of. So what I'd assumed about Peridot's prejudices against Garnet many episodes ago proved to be completely true here, perhaps even more than I anticipated. Not only does Peridot not comprehend love, she doesn't even comprehend friendship or companionship. Two people doing something together, thus making the activity better, is a concept that was lost on her. That's really fascinating. Gems have a wide array of feelings even on Homeworld. In the answer, we see Ruby's play fighting and being cocky with each other, and like a group of rowdy younglings, they seem to be deriving enjoyment from goofing around. Seeing behavior like this makes me think that Ruby's even in Homeworld society should comprehend companionship and perhaps even friendship. So, is this lack of understanding only for specific gems, such as Peridot's, who perhaps are expected to be single lone technicians in gem society? 
There is an alternative. Lapis in the episode The Message states that Homeworld is not the way it used to be. While this is a very vague statement, perhaps Homeworld over time has transitioned into a society where companionship between gems is not allowed at all, whereas in the past, it still was to a certain extent. In this episode, Peridot finally takes the first step to understanding Garnet and essentially asks Garnet to explain herself. My reaction to when Garnet says, Let's fuse. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry you had to listen to that noise, which probably sounded like a goat in the process of rapid exsanguination, but I swear that is the exact noise I made. Let's, let's move on. I am so glad Peridot couldn't go through with the fusion despite wanting to. It still demonstrates incredibly well just how much she wants to understand Earth. She was completely earnest when she first said this line to Amethyst. But rebuilding your entire ideology and perspective on the world? That has to take a long time. I am so glad Peridot's development is not being rushed. Peridot is continuously having multi-step progression toward understanding Earth. It's tiered, it's believable, it feels realistic, and the Crewniverse has been exceptional at writing this Green Munchkin's transformation. Log date 7152, what a laugh inducing, heartfelt, and wonderful end to Stephen Baum 4. I give this episode 4 Garnet Thumbs Up.